And good morning to those of you joining us from Japan. I uh, just want to kick off this call by welcoming everybody, wishing everybody a very happy holidays from the Bellator family to you and yours. Uh, thanks again for joining us today. We really appreciate each and every one of you taking the time to cover this historic event uh, between Bellator and Ryzen. As you know, it takes place New Year's Eve from the famous Saitama Super Arena in Japan. Uh, joining us on today's call, we've got Bellator President Scott Coker, along with Ryzen President Nobuyuki Saki Kibara. Uh, the fights are right around the corner, and so we just wanted to take the opportunity before Christmas to give the media a chance to ask questions. So if you have a question, uh, please press the raise hand button and uh, we will call on you. Uh, we're just going to jump right into it here. I'll call on the first person, uh, Nolan King. Your line is live. Thanks, Danny. Uh, my first question is for Scott. Uh, Scott, we've seen Bellator and Ryzen partner a handful of times in the past. I guess, what do you think, what do you attribute this relationship to, to, to and why does it work so well? Um, this is a relationship that really started in uh, 2004, 2005. Uh, so it's been quite a long time, many years of working together. Not always, you know, because, you know, whether he was, um, uh, you know, when, when he was on his non-compete period, I was on my non-compete period. But um, there's, you know, it's really been a, about a 17-year um, friendship and the relationship that has led to these fights taking place. And 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 by the way, it's it's not always easy. These these really these this relationship, even though it's solid, uh, still has you know many bumps along the way to get to this point where we can put something like this together. So I'm extremely happy about uh, what we're putting together on New Year's Eve. I think it's very exciting. This is historical for MMA because it just doesn't happen, as you know. But um, uh, like I said, it's been a long relationship. Uh, but uh, to get to this point, there's been some bumps and bruises. Uh, but, um, you know, we're ready to go. And, you know, you talk about the bumps and bruises. I'm sure sometimes it's difficult maybe to, to figure out what exactly you guys want to do with one another when it comes to these cards. And, you guys have done this, like I said, a bunch of times in the past, but it seems like particularly with this one, uh, you guys are all in. Like you have some of your really headlining stars going over to, to Japan for this competition. So was there any hesitancy on your part? Like when the names started getting brought up, like Pitbull and McKee, like, you know, I don't know if we want to give them all this, all the stars over there. Or were you just all in from the start? You know, I'll tell you, uh, when we first started talking about this event, I what really was thinking, okay, maybe we'll send a couple of our top guys, a couple of our, you know, B level guys, a couple of our C level guys, and just bring a very mixed team. Uh, and, uh, you know, Saki Vara is the one that said, no, no, bring, bring all your best guys. We want to fight all your top fighters, which I was surprised. I said, are you sure? And he said, yeah, let's, let's do your best and let's get the best of the best uh, fighting inside Tampa Super Arena on new year's eve uh and and that's what we did and my uh, my last questions for saki gabara um you have there's a lot of mma promotions out there from your perspective i guess why do you choose bellator what is what do you like about them and what do you why do you think this relationship works so well クラブを共にする時間を長く持ってる。そういういいあのヘルシーなすごく競争相手、競争相手だけども本当に信頼が受けるヘルシーなあのすばらしい関係ができてるっていうのが一つあのベラトルというかそれベラトルということよりもスコ
、うん、そのスポーツのメインの場所だったと思うけど、今はもう完全に北米だと思います。それは UFC、そしてベラトール、この2大メジャーブランドが、やっぱり世界の MMA のやっぱりメジャーリーグなんで、だからそこのやっぱり北米でメジャーリーグの,のこのベラトールと、我々とするとやっぱり日本というね、まあ、過去、プライド時代はメインのパート、国だったかもしれないけど、今はもう北米であるんで、その北米の、あの、やっぱりビッグプロモーションとの、あの、やっぱりコープロモーションというか、コラボレーションというか、それが、あの、我々からすると、一番ワクワクする。上位外に挑んでいくっていうシチュエーションがいい。あの、ファンも喜ぶと思います。So, another reason is that, you know, despite the Where the MMA origin came from. You know,、uh, Pride had its days back in Japan, but the, the modern MMA industry is everything is leading from North America. North America is the place for mixed martial arts right now. And obviously, there are ma- major players in North America, and definitely Bellator is one of them. And as, you know, for, from, as a promotion in Japan, it's very exciting for us. To take on and challenge the major league. So, that concept, you know,、um, the whole, the whole,、uh, the, the business, what, it used to be in Japan, but now it's in North America for us. So, for us, it's very important that, you know, we challenge the major league, we challenge North America, we challenge、uh, the global market. And that's what the Japanese fans are wanting to see. We'll take our next question from John Morgan. Thanks, Danny. Scott, I want to start with you if I could, please.、Um, I just want to ask you personally. I mean, you know, New Year's Eve, Japan, I mean, it's a legendary day in the sport for, for years and years. So, just personally, I mean, business aside, what does this mean for you to be involved in, in such an event like this?、Um, really, I'm really excited and honored to be a part of New Year's Eve at this level,、uh, meaning a fight where we're going to bring. Five of our top guys against five of Ryzen's top fighters and champions.、Um, as you guys know, the history of this arena having fights on New Year's Eve, I believe it goes back 20 years now. And, and even when I was,、uh, you know, I, I was working for K1 at the time, and,、uh, and then I stopped working for K1 around 2006, 2007.、Um, but I still went back to Japan. Uh, to, to see the New Year's Eve show because it was such a big spectacle. And if you've never been there or you've never seen it, you got to tune in and watch it because it is something that's spectacular. I can't, I can't describe it. There's nothing like it. And、uh, when I, I remember walking through the tunnel and, and seeing the whole production and the whole event and the, the fighters that were fighting at that time, it, it was really, really something that just stuck to me. And、uh, you know, here we are years later. Uh, coming in with、uh, our top guys. Uh, and uh, this is going to be a historical event. I'm, I'm really, really excited because not only will you see you know, the, you know, our fighters fighting in a different apparatus, a different environment, a different country, different rules, different regulations,、uh, it's, it's, it's something that、uh, we're going to test our guys. They're going to test their guys. And、um, it's all going to be at the Saitama Super Arena, which is really the Yankee Stadium of MMA. Yeah, it's a, it's a pretty amazing concept. And as you said, I mean, you guys have had this relationship for a while, but not to this level where it's this super card like this on a historic night. So I'm just curious. I mean, are you hoping that this is the beginning of an annual type thing, a, you know, a partnership? Or are you just kind of looking at it as, well, let's wait and see what happens? How, how are you viewing this? Well, Saki Bar and I talked about a two fight event because the next one has to be in a cage and it has to be under the Bellator rules. And,、uh, you know, things can be different. When、uh, the rules are different and the apparatus is different, and just coming into a different environment, whether we do that here in the US or in Japan, it hasn't been figured out. I think Hawaii would be something that would be a lot of fun. Maybe in the future we could do something together、uh, there. But、um, you know, I want to just get through this first one、uh, on the 31st, and then we can start talking about、uh, the future together. And、hey, last thing I have for you, Scott, I mean, obviously the friendship and the relationship that you guys have is well documented, but I'm just curious. I mean, does this indicate a willingness from you? From Bellator to entertain offers from other promoters to do something like this? Or is this just a unique relationship because of you know, how much you guys、uh, have known each other? You know, and I, I don't know if a lot of people know this, but you know, our relationship really started、uh, when we were you know, 
basically trading fighters back and forth. Uh, Aoki fought here against Gilbert Melendez back years ago. We sent Josh Thompson to fight Kyle Jerry. But also, uh, Saki Guevara really, uh, you know, saved us one time when we were doing the strike force. We didn't have a main event, and uh, I, I asked uh, Saki Guevara if he would send somebody over, and he sent over uh, Alistair Overing to fight Vitor Belfort, right? So he really went out of his way to help uh, strike force back in the day. I've never forgot. And uh, I always said one day, you know, if I can, I'll reciprocate and, and then some. And here we are working with other promoters. There has to be a certain amount of trust. And what are they bringing to the table? Uh, and I think that's really the question is, you know, uh, what, what is a relationship going to look like moving forward? And, uh, you know, what, what fighters are they going to want to fight? Or, you know, what, uh, what, what does a business look like maybe moving forward? Uh, after the event's over. So there's a lot, of, a lot of questions because really, John, as you know, you're putting your fighters in harm's way. You're putting your brand in harm's way. And that's okay because that should be the martial arts way, right? And uh, in, where the best fight the best. And in, when Sagibara owned Pride, that's what happened. Before, uh, you know, the UFC came and bought Pride, the best fighters were fighting in Pride. And, um, uh, you know, the best fighters were fighting in K1 at that time. So, uh, you know, I don't mean to go off on a tangent, but at, at the end of the day, it comes down to the best fighters should fight the best fighters. But there's a, a business component to it. And, uh, you know, does it make sense in the long run? And is there a certain amount of trust between you and the other promoter to make sense uh, that it makes business sense? Thank you, Scott. I appreciate it, man. Definitely excited for the event. And uh, Mr. Saki Gabara, please, I just wanted to ask what you thought of the lineup of fighters the Bellator is sending to Japan. You, you asked for their best. You got their best. Uh, um, what do you think of the lineup they're sending to you? あの、ま、あの、チャンピオン含めてね、全力で勝ち向かわないとあの、反対側でそういうあの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、
、大晦日がやっぱり日本では本当にトラディショナルなスペシャルな日であるということが一つと、まあ、2000本当にあの2000年ミレニアムのとこから20年間大晦日に格闘技をあの見る、格闘技のイベントをやるってことがもう、あの我々格闘技、日本の格闘技業界の中では。スペシャルなイベントを、あのー、普通常の、あのー、大会とは別にもう少し規模のでかいみんながワクワクするドキドキするそういうスペシャルなイベントを作り出すっていうことが、まあ、期待されてるんでその期待に、あのー、応える、あのー、にはもうあまりあるぐらいの、あのー、ベラトル側からのラインナップなんでやっぱりこれは大みそかにスペシャルイベントとして見せるべきだというふうに、あのー、思いました。So,、so, um, Ryzen started, we started our event back in 2015. So, this will be our seventh New Year's Eve. And、uh, back in 2015, when we first had our event, Scott also helped us provide his fighters. And,、uh, you know, we've had cooperating, we had the cooperation back then. And、uh, New Year's Eve is, is definitely a traditional day for,、uh, for Japan, uh, culturally um, and for, for our industry. Like Scott said, this, we've been doing. MMA fights, big fights on New Year's Eve for the past 20 years. And it's become a tradition and it's a culture that people expect on New Year's Eve. So we want, we've always wanted to make New Year's Eve the season peak, the highest point of the entire year. So we want to spice it up a little bit. We want, we want to add a little flair. And people are always anticipating what can we see this year. So When we start thinking about what to do on New Year's Eve, you know, right now is a great time to, to cooperate with Baltor, with Baltor bringing their best. And you know, this was just the best timing and the best thing to present to the fans who are anticipating what we're doing this year. Thank you. Thanks, guys. All right, we've got quite a lineup here of questions. So if we could limit it to one or two per media member, we'd really appreciate it. We'll take our next question from Jay Anderson. Thanks very much. And、uh, Scott, I'll, I'll try to keep these brief.、Um, you know, we've talked a lot about the best going against the best, which is absolutely happening here. But was there anyone that you hope to have on this card who, for logistics or injury or anything else, you just couldn't get here for New Year's? Yeah, I would say Aaron Pico was definitely a fighter that we wanted to bring to Japan.、Uh, but because of his、uh, shoulder injury、uh, in his last fight, he wasn't able to, to come here. But、um, You know, Aaron is somebody I think that would personally love to fight in Japan.、Um, and、uh, maybe in the future, we can bring Aaron Pico、uh, to, back to the, to, to the table. And for Sakaki Barra san,、uh, Ohayo Gozemas, you know, Scott mentioned the idea of maybe going to the US for the next in this series. Does that interest you? Is that the logical next step? Maybe Hawaii? Yeah, I think so. 一過性のものじゃなくて、やっぱりこれが本当にこうトップバーサストップでね、何か本当にこの新しいこの格闘 MMA インダストリーの一つのムーブメントになっていけばいい。まあそのプロモーションの中の順位決定戦じゃなくて、やっぱりプロモーション後同士が全力でぶつかり合う。やっぱりここ本気のトップアスリートぶつけないとそういうこと起きないと思うけど、何かスコットとも新しいムーブメントを起きていくことがあのでき起きるといいよねっていうことを言ってるんでこれは一過性のものではなくてここをキックオフにしてあのスコットとまた話をして僕らがトップアスリートを連れてアメリカに、えー、乗り込んで戦いたいと思います。So yes, definitely we are we don't want this to be a one-time thing. We have no intentions of making this into a one-off. Obviously, the top versus top is what Everybody wants to see. And we're hoping that you know, we can, this can be the beginning of a new movement in, in our industry, something that we can start something new.、Um, because there's only, you can only go so far when you're doing the ranking system within your own promotion. And we do believe that serious competition amongst the promotions is our, the next step of what we need in our, in, in our,、uh, in our industry. So, we've been talking about, you know, with Scott, we've been talking about how to create this new action, new movement. But,、uh, you know, I think it makes absolute sense 
that after this event, a successful event, you know, we take our Japanese athletes or our Ryzen athletes and, and head over to the States and fight under the Bellator rules. Um, it only makes sense. All right. Well, looking forward to it. Arigato gozaimasu. Santiago. Thank you so much, Danny. And uh, hi, Scott. Many people around the world were very excited about this big co-promotion event. Why do you think they reacted so well to the news? Do you think it's because of two promotions coming together with their best guys and putting it all on the line, which is unheard of, Scott? Or do you think it has a lot to do with the rich MMA history in Japan and the crazy Ryzen rules where more ground action is allowed? I'll tell you, uh, both are very good questions. And when I think about um, two promotions getting together like this and not just doing one fight or, you know, two fights or, but this is a five on five, you know, team match, champ, like a team, team, team match, basically team runoff. And, and what I mean by that is it's like the Olympics. You bring five of your best athletes uh, for in, in different weight classes and they bring five of their best athletes. And this is like a, a, a mini Olympics in my mind. And, uh, and just historically, because of the way the MMA companies have been so, uh, you know, separated or maybe working in their own, uh, you know, let's say verticals or whatever you want to call it, their own company. Uh, it just hasn't happened, you know, and uh, the UFC doesn't do it, right? Uh, and in the past, we haven't done it. Sakibar hasn't done it. We've done one-offs here, one-offs there. But to do something like this, where it's five on five, the best fighting the best, it's an historical event that I think that's why the people are so excited um, the other answer to your question is, think about this. Where else in the world uh, can you go on New Year's Eve and have 30,000 people there and come to a fight on a New Year's Eve uh, event? It just does not happen. You know, martial arts is so ingrained in, the, uh, in, in Japan and the, the DNA and, and who they are uh, is, it comes from a very rich tradition of traditional martial arts. And they love MMA. And so to me, you put all that together and you put it together in Saitama Super Arena, like I said, which is the Yankee Stadium of MMA, uh, along with our five athletes against theirs. It just makes for a very special night. Yeah, very special indeed, Scott. And can you please briefly talk about what the thought process was behind picking Gatsi Rabadanov as your fifth guy? Because it took a little bit longer to announce him. But lightweight is a deep division in Bellator. Why specifically him? Did Khabib and Ali ask you for this fight? Yeah, you know, actually, Habib asked me. He said, uh, I have a fighter. I'd like to bring him and to go fight in Japan. I said, of course, then let's do it. And Habib will be there in Japan. Uh, and Hoist Gracie will be there in Japan. And uh, it's going to be a lot of fun uh, hanging out with them. And, and, and I think it's Habib's first time in Japan. He's very excited to come. Thank you for the time, Scott, and uh, good luck on New Year's Eve. Thank you. Take our next question from Stephen Morocco. Question for Saki Kabara. Um, do you think that the Ryzen scoring system more accurately reflects the winner of a fight than the 10-point must system used in America? Mm -hmm. well, I つぶれてるというふうにあの違いには言えないというかまああのやっぱりポイントシステムによっても選手の戦い方タクティクスとかね戦略が変わるんでそれはやっぱり選手がそれをあのうまく理解してあのやってくれればいいと思いますしどっち
So you can text me and I'll text you back. But honestly, they had a rules meeting with our athletes about the gloves and they sent over gloves of what they're going to be wearing. And they're, you know, uh, uh, very honest about how the rules work. Our guys, all the coaches, everybody knows. So everything's out on the plate. And we wanted to do this event just like any other Ryzen event. And so, you know, we didn't want it to be halfway use our gloves and halfway use our gloves. That was an original dialogue that did happen. But it just got confusing. So to me, this is a Ryzen event. We're joining on with them. And the next one, they'll have to come join with us. Scott, would you like to see uh, knees to the ground, uh, knees to the head of a ground opponent and uh, soccer kicks allowed in Bellator? You know, I'll tell you, I'm very happy with the rules, the way they sit uh, in the U.S. and with Bellator. But uh, this is something that is allowed there. All, all our fighters, I can tell you this, our fighters all know about it. And they are excited about the expansion of the rules. And uh, if they have an opportunity, they will take advantage of it. But um, personally, I feel very good about where we're at on the rules and regulations. And one more question, if I could, for Mr. Saki Kabara. Um, can't help but think of Fedor talking about New Year's Eve and fighting in Japan. Um, what do you think about Fedor fighting his retirement fight in California with Bellator? Mm-hmm. So yeah, so Fedor is definitely a fighter who he's a superstar who built an era of the sport that we that we live in. And uh, you know, I plan on going traveling to LA to to watch his last fight. And, uh, you know, there's a, there's a lot of mixed emotions um, behind his last fight. Okay, thank you. All right, we'll go next to Adam Guillen. Question is for Mr. Coker, if I could. Uh, piggybacking off that last question, was there ever any consideration to have Fedor compete just because of the rich history with Japan and uh, pride, of course? Um, you know, to be honest, um, in 2019, uh, we did a fight at Super Arena with Saki Guevara, and that was Fedor's last fight in Japan. And we, we didn't want to go back and be like, oh, this is his second last fight in Japan and, mm-hmm. and run it back. So uh, the idea originally was to fight in Japan. The next year we would fight in America, and then we were going to do the final fight in, in, uh, in Russia at that time. Mm-hmm. And Fedor had a fight set up to be his retirement fight uh, in, in Red Square in, of July of this year that obviously for many reasons just could not happen or did not happen. And it, we, we wouldn't go there uh, because of the situation uh, uh, politically and uh, with the war going on. So um, we had to scramble because COVID hit and then the war hit. Um, so we did the second fight uh, before uh in moscow a year before uh in october so about a year and uh, a year and a month ago he was uh fighting in uh or two months ago a year and two months ago he was fighting in moscow and he did very well and uh we were thinking where can we put the retirement fight but to go back to japan just wasn't a uh, an option because we already had one retirement fight and we said look uh when we land the cbs opportunity we said let's let's go for it because this is how he started to build his name in America. He had a couple of pay-per-view fights before he ended up on Strike Force and on CBS. But really, I think there's like 6 million people watched that very first fight that he fought, uh, Brett Rogers. And that really helped launch his brand in America and let the whole world, I mean, let America know what the whole world already uh, knew, which was he is uh, the greatest fighter of all time. Oh, that makes sense. That makes sense. And one quick question regarding the lineup. What went into deciding who was going to headline? You know, Pitts, Pitbull versus Urge or McKee? What, was there any ego involved? Was there any friction? Or does that not even come into play? Yeah, well, <laughs> you, you must know these guys. That's, that's why you're asking me this question. <laughs> you know, of course, there's always like, um, you know, personalities involved. Let's put it that way. But mm-hmm. I, I will tell you something I was really, really impressed in watching. It was at the press conference at Roppongi Hills two months ago when we had our press conference there. We had all of our fighters. 
They had all their fighters. And really, it was, you know, AJ and, and Pitbull and Juan and our whole, all of our four fighters, Horiguchi. It's like, they understand this is a Bellator team. And mm-hmm. this is, you're, you're on the team. And they got it. And I could see them starting to bond together. And I could see them starting. So, granted, when this is over, believe me, that rivalry will continue. That's not going to go anywhere. But for this moment in time, they're going to be teammates. And they're going to be fighting together as a team. And uh, I feel that there's, there's camaraderie there for uh, the team Bellator. I think there's camaraderie there for uh, the team uh, in Ryzen. And as far as who fights last and who the, really that came from Saki Guevara's decision because they have their champion uh, who's going to be fighting last. And that happens to be AJ McHugh's opponent, but uh, no one was complaining on our side. No one was, you know, you know, uh, talking about, well, why is this? And they were just all happy to be there. They're excited to fight and uh, team Bellator will be ready on the 31st. Got it. Thank you so much. And one quick question for Mr. Saki Kabara. How's it going to feel for you to have one of your former champions in Horiguchi now fighting for the other side, so to speak? <laughs> yeah, ma, I know. Ma, what do you know? What do you think? I know. Ma, I know. 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 選手ですし、まあ逆に僕らはあのやっぱりベラトールとか UFC とかをメジャーリーグと思ってるんで、まあプロ野球に例えると僕ら日本のね、野球の選手がメジャーリーグに行って、まあ松井秀喜とか大谷翔平とか活躍する姿を常にニュースで知って誇りに思うんです。だから、まあまあそのメジャーリーグで戦う堀口が凱旋して日本でメラトールで戦うってことはある意味嬉しくもあるんで、うん、あのそういう意味ではあのとっても興味深い特になんかそれを嫌だとかって思ってなくてプラスに感じられてますこれはファンも同じです。Yeah, it's a, it's a very interesting situation because h o i g u c h i is an extremely popular fighter、uh, amongst the Japanese fans. And、uh, you know, like we said earlier, we do consider you know, Bellator, the UFC, the major league. Of, of this sport. And we look at it as we look at Horiguchi, just like、um, in, in baseball, we had Hideki Matsui go to, go to the major league. We have、uh, Shohei Otani right now. So it's, it's kind of like so we get the news, we watch the news, and we witness the Japanese fighters、um, doing well overseas in the major leagues. And we feel proud for these individuals. And the same feeling goes to Horiguchi amongst us and amongst all the All the Japanese fans. So for us, it's, it's like Shohei Otani coming back and fighting in,、uh, and competing against Japanese、uh, in the Japanese league. So, and we are very proud of that. And so it's not like we, we feel discomfortable, like uncomfortable.、Um, we're actually proud and we're very happy. It's a very interesting situation. But,、uh, you know, we're, we're very happy that we can bring Horiguchi back as a current major, major league player. And、uh, we do believe that all the Japanese fans feel the same way. Great. Thank you so much. We'll take our next question from Edward Carbajal. Thank you.、Um, Mr. Coker, I'll ask、uh, it's for both of you, but I'll ask you first, Mr. Coker.、Um, in keeping with the theme of co promoting and kind of trying to keep the Ryzen versus Bellator or,、uh, moving forward in 2023, in between these events that you're talking about holding, Um, would you consider doing、um, like a, you have a, a pretty robust YouTube channel, 1.59 million subscribers? Would you consider doing、uh, like a sub only grappling event streaming on there between Bellator's best grapplers and, and Ryzen's best grapplers? Because both, ro- both promotions have、uh, pretty good grapplers in it. You know, I, I tell you, this is、uh, my, my, my answer is、um, we're, we're extremely busy already. <laughs> And,、uh, you know, for us to do the amount of shows that we do,、uh, it's, it's very challenging. And it's a grind every year to pump these shows out. And because、uh, we're doing fights at the highest level, just like、mm-hmm. Saki b a r a you know, it's,、uh, it's a lot of work. And uh, uh, to me, it's, if, if, it, if it had something maybe more to it than that, maybe we could. 
you know, I, I'm not even sure what the hook would be, but if we had something that made sense, uh, and maybe we would consider it, but, you know, to, I, I love martial arts and I love grappling uh, and jujitsu, but, um, you know, we're in the MMA fight business and uh, I think we'll stick to that for now. Okay. We'll go to Roy Robinson next. I have a question for both of you guys. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay, question for both. Um, obviously, this is a big event, co-promotion. Um, each promotion wants their fighters to obviously look really good on the card. Um, of course, you guys are friends, and it's friendly competition. But do either of you have any incentives for your fighters to, you know, maybe perform at their highest level for you? Uh, well, this is Scott. I, um, you know, we have we have not discussed that with any of the fighters as far as you know incentive uh, for winning their fight. Uh, it's something that uh, we definitely will think about. But um, uh, I think there's enough incentive already built in because of the of the historical event that this is, and and just you know what it means uh, to win this fight, uh, whether you're for Ryzen or whether you're for Bellator.考えてますか。僕もあの特別にそのインセンティブっていうのはあの なんかまあスコットも感じてると思うけど、常にワクワクしてるんだ。それとやっぱり誇りにも思ってるし、ここに選ばれたこと。これがもう何よりのインセンティブだと思うし、彼らが本当に全力で戦うにふさわしい環境
stigma to it right now because of the situation. So it's not going to be monetary, but I do have a proposal to Saki Barra that we will be putting uh, something on the line, but uh, I'm not ready to talk about it yet. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Saki Kabara, you're going into your eighth year with Ryzen, and eight symbolizes new beginnings. What can we expect to see new in Ryzen in the upcoming year? に um, so yeah, please look forward for, you know, uh, Ryzen's new ventures in 2023, you know, uh, we're all, all at the post COVID era now. And, um, you know, obviously, uh, both the U S and Japan had a good run in the world cup. Um, but through these world global, uh, festivities and content, we, we definitely see the, the shift in, in how the users watch content. It used to be terrestrial television, but now it's not. It's, it's all on the internet, now it's all streaming. So there's a lot more, we see that, we think that there's a lot more business opportunities because of this shift. And um, you know, after the COVID's done, we're in a post-COVID era, I think now is the time to start creating Japanese content that can um, wow the world. Um, so our, our ambition is to create Japanese content and start to deliver it internationally. We'll go to uh, Bruno Masami. Can you hear me? Um, my question is to Sakakabara san. Uh, unfortunately, this time uh, we not have uh, a fight for the title. Do you believe in the future events, uh, if, if in the future uh, big shows? This is a possibility in the table. Mm, まあ、その中でね、ベルトをかけてやるとかっていう。まあ、それはもう少しともうそんな、あの、<笑> um, yes, there's always a possibility for that. Um, you know, maybe we I mean, Scott and as we've discussed about the possibilities and and all, all sorts of stuff, but you know, uh, the, the fight being for the title fight for both events, it's, it's definitely a possibility. And I think this is just beginning of new things and new ideas to be born. So the, uh, the potential uh, is there. And I have a question to Scott Coker. Uh, unfortunately, do, because of pande the pandemic, of course, uh, we not saw uh, a Bellator show uh, in Japan in, in the last two years. Is there any possibility to see a Bellator event in Japan in 2023? Well, I think you're going to see one on New Year's Eve with Saki Ibarra. That's uh, it's really, it's, uh, uh, I look at it like a Bellator and Ryzen show. It's going to look like a rising show, but you're going to see some of our best fighters uh, all over the world. I mean, but the best fighters in Bellator from all over the world come to Japan and uh, fight their top athletes. So uh, I think that's uh, going to be a great show. And then uh, we'll have discussions uh, with Saki uh where we take that further. And one thing I'd like to say is, you know, over the last seven years or six years since Ryzen was born, um, you know, I've watched Saki Bar build this this brand and build this product into what it is today, and it's quite impressive. I mean, he has built a uh, a business there, uh, kind of uh, on the world scene. It's kind of been uh, on a very you know underground level, but 
if you go there and you see what he's accomplished and the business he's built, it is super impressive. And I think that he has uh, all the building blocks in place and he's going to do some great things in the future. Thank you. Arigatou gozaimasu. Go Matsuyama. Hi, arigatou gozaimasu. Kashiwagi san, just a little bit of a question. Yes. 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 今回の対抗戦のジャッジの陣容はど,どうなりますかそれは坂上さんに聞いた方がいいでしょうかどうしましょう本当に。Uh, question to Scott, please.、Um, what kind of officiating will be taking place、uh, for this New Year's Eve event?、Uh, when you say officiating, you mean who are going to be the referees and the judges and judge. everything? Yeah, I think,、uh, Shingo, you could、uh, answer it because I think we talked about the Japanese organization with the officials, but we are bringing two officials over from、uh, the US. So、uh, I think that's going to be、uh, the, the judging and the,、um, the, let's say, the managing of, of, all, the, of all the bouts and、uh, refereeing, judging, officials, regulations will all be done by、uh, the Japanese organization along with our two officials. あのまあ、これはあのライジン側からも後で詳細の説明できればと思いますが、えー、基本的には我々はアメリカから、えー、オフィシャルを2人連れて行って、まあえー、母体としては日本の、えー、コミッションですねその j m o c さんの方で母体として、えー、運営すべてやってもらうように、えー、しているんですが、えーまあ、アメリカ側から、えー、約2名、えー、その j m o c の運営の中に入れていただいて、えー、それで運営していくと。いう形にはなってます。わかりました。本気だということですね。あのシンプルな質問です。五対五の対抗戦はそれぞれ何勝が目標ですか。そうですか。Um, so we we definitely see、um, how how serious you are towards this competition by you know sending our officials and whatnot. But、uh, straight up question, simple question. What do you think the fight outcome is going to be out of the five fights? How many do you think you're going to? <laughs> you know, I'll tell you.、Um... Of course, I, I, we, want, we want to go 5 0. I mean, that's my goal, right? To, to win every fight. But in this, in this landscape and in MMA, you're, it, it's going to be very hard to do. So we'll see.、Uh, the goal is to go 5 0.、Uh, but a punch, you know, any one, one wrong punch, one, one wrong kick, or one takedown could change the outcome of. Of,、uh, I guess what I'm saying is one mistake can change the outcome of a fight. So, MMA is something that you know, things could change extremely quickly, and、um, you never know in mixed martial arts. It's, it's, it's hard to call、uh, what will be the outcome. But I can tell you my goal, which will be 5 and 0. And I'm sure Saki y u r a r a wants to go 5 and 0 against us too, right? I mean, that that's, has to be his goal. So,、uh, I think that's why this is such a great、uh, promotion because. Uh, he feels confident. I feel confident. And、uh, let, let the fighters fight, and、uh, we'll see what happens. So, this is a good thing. I don't know if I'm going to say that, but I'm going to say that. 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 えーねえーえー、so, Scott, I think that's something that we should continue to do. 当然、全勝を目指していきたいと思いますが、あとはもう選手たちに委ねたいなと思っています。坂井村さんも同じ考えでよろしいでしょうか、うん、僕もあの5勝0敗で、あのとにかくうちのうちのライジンの選手たちが世界を驚かせるビッグチャンスだと思ってるんですよね。本当にベラトールのトップアスリートたちを僕らが 5, 5連勝しちゃえば、ライジンすげえじゃんと。それと、もう、それこそ、あの、サトシも、あの、クレーベルも、みんな、彼らの名前が一躍世界中の MMA 業界にを駆け巡ると思って、僕らにとってはビッグチャンスだと思う。まあ、ライジンにとってもだし、うちの選手たちにとっても。だから、あの、スコットには申し訳ないけども、ここは、あの、5連勝、あの、させていただこうと思ってます。
So Saka Kibarsan just said, uh, you know, we also believe that we can go 5-0. and And uh, I think this is a great opportunity for Ryzen and the Ryzen fighters to surprise the world. And if, you know, our fighters, Ryzen, can beat all of the Bellator's top athletes, that's going to surprise the world. And that would instantly make our fighters recognized throughout the world. And, um, like, obviously, people know about uh, Roberto Satoshi. They will know about Clever Koike overnight. And um, I think it's a great motivation for all the fighters. So it's a great opportunity not only for to, to bring out the Ryzen brand, but individually for these fighters, it's a great opportunity for them to get their name recognized and put the spotlight on them at a global level. Uh, so, so, Scott, we're sorry, but we're going to go 5-0. and oh. <laughs> I like it. I, I like it. <laughs> All right, we'll take our last question here from Giancarlo Alino. Thanks. Uh, question for Scott. Uh, with the Bellator Lightweight Grand Prix coming up, has there been any talk of AJ McKee, if you were to get the win here against Satoshi Sosa to get the title shot against Usman Magomedov? Or on the flip side of that, if Satoshi Sosa were to be one of your pound-for-pound pound top best, would he be willing to maybe extend an invitation to him to compete in the Grand Prix? Yeah, the uh, lightweight tournament, which we've committed to, will happen in 2023. Uh, we haven't decided what month it'll launch or who will fight uh, in this tournament. Then we have some great options. It's uh, an exciting division with a lot of young stars. I'm super excited about it. Um, and then as, uh, as far as the Ryzen champion fighting AJ, it's, uh, you know, the issue is really it's like, you know, um, tying up their athlete. That's why we didn't make any of these title fights, because if you tie up their athlete for a year, you know, they have a business to run to. Right. So we have to be respectful of uh, their business. But, uh, you know, would there be an invitation? Of course, maybe he could fight at the end where we have the champion and the champion can fight the champion kind of thing. But uh, to tie up their, their current rising champion for a year could be very challenging. I, I want to say of, a, of an ask uh, to Asaki Bar because, like you said, we have a business to run and they have a business to run. And what you're seeing on the 31st is a very unique, very special situation where just the timing is right and we can put all these fights together. But, uh, you know, like I said, in, in the future, uh, timing will be an issue again. All right. And as we wrap it up, I just wanted to uh, say one more time and wish everybody a very you know, happy holidays and a Merry Christmas. I do want to let you all know that uh, the fighters from the Bellator versus Rising card will be made available for virtual media availabilities the morning of the 29th in Japan, the evening of the 28th here in the States. Uh, so keep a lookout from the Bellator PR department for information on that. Um, I do want to thank all the media. I want to thank Saki Kibara. I want to thank Mr. Coker for joining us. And uh, again, yeah, have a, have a happy holidays and a Merry Christmas. Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well,